let's get into tonight's lesson. We're talking about godly leadership, right? That heavenly leadership. And I just love that background. It just, you know, I keep looking and be like, Lord, are you coming? Are you coming out? Come, come on down. Come on. You know, it just, I was like I say, I'm just in a heavenly mood tonight. How y'all doing? Right. Godly leadership, nine essential qualities. And I, as I always say, everything that people come to us looking for, we can say, hey, the answer to your question, the answer to your problem is right in the scripture. So tonight's lesson, another lesson to back up, as I like to say, my receipts of when I tell you what you're looking for is right in one of the 66 books guaranteed. For those that like to follow along, we coming out of Proverbs, Proverbs 16, the entire lesson. Thanks, sister-in-law. Uh, tonight's entire lesson is coming out of Proverbs to show you what you're looking for when you're saying, man. I don't know how to lead these people. I don't know how to handle this charge that I've been given. I don't know how to move forward. And as opposed to seeking man's counsel, God has already given it to us. It's already laid out in Proverbs 16, right? So the first thing I did, I went to Amazon. Let me go ahead here. I went to Amazon and, and I um, put in the search for the word leadership. 60,000 different results, 60,000 different books, articles of people telling us leadership. And I said, man, 60,000 people. Hey, Trish, glad to see you. Glad to see you, Alice. Um, 60,000 different people have publications on there. And I'm quite sure it would have been more if I maybe would have put in leadership qualities, but I was just looking for the word leadership, right? 60,000 different results, 60,000 different men and women, maybe some children have written some books too on leadership, but 60,000 people um, providing different ways, their advice on how to be an effective leader, right? But if you look at it, the the uh, the free publication that it's in and most of the times now there's still a lot of places i know like lifeway i'm constantly getting cards from them lifeway christian center come in and get your free bible come in and get your free bible you know they're always giving away there's a lot of sites online so the one free publication and even now on cell phones you can pull it up you know and get just about any version you want in the app right on the phone but i like to have mine in the book form right that's the way i like mine and i take my book form with me to service as well. I don't like messing around with them apps. Mm -mm. So uh, the one free, uh, the, the uh, free tool for it right there. But you know, we spend money, uh, all this money for all these conferences, you know, and, and saying this guru says that I should be this type of leader, this type of leader, but it's all right there given to us, right? Solomon laid it out. Proverbs 16, right? And I saw a quote. I want to throw in real quick because to me, the Bible gives the most effective, the most effective advice on leadership, not saying the other people, you know, the gurus that have their degrees and they've specialized in and they have their coaching, counseling degrees and everything like that. Not saying to discount them because they do have some good information, but for the uh, effective advice on leadership, I'm going to the, uh, one of the 66 books, right? And I saw a quote that said, if your action inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. And I studied that for a minute, and I said, wait a minute. I don't quite rightly agree with that. I, I, I just don't, right? And, and I say that because if people are watching you carry out ungodly actions, right? If they're making you do, as the, the word the Bible likes to use that I've been using all week, abominable. If you're doing um, abominable acts, right, in order to become a leader, right, everything that you're doing to become that leader is at the um, expense. It's ungodly acts that you're doing, right? So to me, um, that's not an effective leader. So that's where I kind of tended to vary with that quote, right? Um, 
ineffective leadership. It causes deficiencies, you know, in our homes, in our nation, in our workplaces, in our communities. You know, it, it just wreaks havoc all over the place. Ineffective leadership. And not just saying, we're, we're not just looking at this from a job perspective, right? Because everybody, you're leading somebody whether you realize it or not. Whether it's family members that are watching you. Whether it's people that come on, you know, and watch your periscopes if you do live broadcasts. The neighbors may be watching. And whether they say it or not, they may be following your example and say, well, you know what? I like the way that um, Sister Shay is doing that. So not necessarily um, does this apply to just job situations. Every one of us is in a leadership position and our actions should count and show accordingly to that right um people that lead with the my way or the highway attitude, right? That forced coercion that's like, man, you're more of a dictator than a leader, right? Somebody out there know what I'm talking about. And, and as we go through those things, I could list out all of those traits. And, and you may people may pop into your mind and you may be like, yeah, Tor, I do know somebody. But what we have to look at first is as MJ's song says, that man, that woman in the mirror, that's what I'm concerned about, right? And again, as I always say, the message is to the messenger first to remind me, Tor. This is, you know, giving me, saying, Tor, these are non essential qualities that you need to make sure you're constantly working on. These are things that need to be on point because guarantee somebody's watching, somebody's listening, and they just waiting for you to step to the left, step to the right just a little bit. The next thing you know, you all over social media, all your business out there. Mm hmm. Y'all know it. I see it all the time across YouTube with the people that like to put on blast all of the things that's going on right now um in our church houses within our church bodies hey nick Nat, glad to see you right so we have to make sure these nine essential which proverbs lays out let's look at that first one right that very first one if we look at proverbs 16 uh 16 and 1 the preparations of the heart belong to man but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord, right? So seeking God's direction. The first one, you want to make sure you're, as a leader, you're seeking God's direction in whatever you're doing, whether it's with your children, again, family, this is not just occupational um, as I'm talking about this. I got to keep emphasizing that. And, you know, for those to be like, well, Tori, you already said, you know, I'm going to keep on saying it because a lot of people like to take these this kind of topic and apply it just to the workplace. This applies to people, um, stay at home moms, stay at home dads, people um, in a job, wherever position you're in. As a human being, these are the qualities that you want to strive for, right? A good leader seeks God's direction. And um, the other version, if you look at Proverbs 16 and 1, the plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord, right? And if you look at verse three, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. If you bump down to nine, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. A good leader seeks the Lord, commits his way to the Lord, and the Lord establishes his steps, right? So once we say, you know what, I could do this my way, but what is the godly way? What is the biblical way? I'm saying I'm a Christian. What is the Christian way that I need to make? What, give me the direction I need to go with this plan, right? Because what do they say? Some of the best laid plans will lead you down the quickest road to hell. Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about out there. Some of the best laid plans plans. Um, the next one, right? Let's look at number two, modest and not arrogant. If we, if we look at 16 and five, everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. When I read that, I'm like, my God, God, I you, you know, if you're up there looking down, I, I, I don't want you looking at me as, as an abomin, uh, abomination. I'm telling you, they, that word is, I, I never realized how much that word was used throughout the scripture, right? So a, a good leader is modest and not arrogant, right? And I was on, oh, Maryland, that's who scope it was. And... 
Actually, so I can say, Marilyn kind of guided this a little bit as, as I was going through because uh, it was a it was either a script, it was a quote. That's what it was, right? Try not to lie, and mess it up. Here it was a quote at the end of her scope last night. If you guys didn't catch it, go catch it. Great scope. Um, it was a quote she was trying to figure out who said it, and she said, "You know, I can't remember." Who said it? But if you're in here, uh, just say it's mine and I'll give you credit. And, I, and I'm thinking, man, what does it matter? You, you're spreading it forward. And I'm like, please don't let some person hop up and say, me, me, me. You quote me. You quote me. To me, you know, I'm like, just, hey, you know, if it was something that I had said, just being me, I'd have been like, great. Glad you used it. I don't need for everybody, all of your Periscope viewers to acknowledge me and pat me on the back, right? So that's one of the things, you know, being modest and not arrogant, not needing recognition for everything. Hey, you know, I was the one. Um, I said that. That. You got that from me. Hey, as long as it's helping somebody else and it's being passed forward, because we know there's nothing new under the sun, right? Somebody else has given these same leadership um, essentials that I've went through. Maybe they've given it in a different way. And y'all know me, I like to put my tornado twist on it, right? So there's nothing new. It's just all about how we recycle and, and, and we keep it going and putting it back out there to help who it's meant to help. Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about, right? So not being arrogant because like I said I don't want uh God looking down and saying oh that's a abominable act right there let me write that down right good ideas are meant to be shared and if you feel like you need recognition for every little thing unfortunately that's the scriptural quality that you might want to look at right there right so let's look at number three because I don't want to hold y'all too long I, I don't number three a good leader keeps the peace a good leader is a peacemaker. You ever went into a meeting, a group, an organization, or even a friendship circle, and it's just that person that, that there's always that one. You can have 10 friends, a, a group of you, right? But it's always going to be that one if everybody was like, okay, who's the leader of this crew? Somebody, you know, everybody's going, yep. Mm -hmm. That's the one right there. That's who's heading us up. You know, that's who's heading up the click. That's, that's who's running the show, so to speak, right? So, but you want that person that's a peacemaker, a peacekeeper, right? And, and, and as the scripture tells us, we want to... Um, Conduct ourselves in the manner, in the image of God, right? And what's the song say? He's a way maker. He's a peacekeeper. He's a peacemaker. So we want to be a peacemaker. Ain't nothing wrong with being a trendsetter, but you don't need to be worshiped for it. Amen. That's what I'm trying to say, plain and simple. It doesn't require all of that acknowledgement. It doesn't need a billboard saying, you know what? Marilyn used my quote, y'all. Well, you know what? I heard, I saw Marilyn uh, post up something I said, and she didn't even give me credit for it. You're messaging 500 people. You're taking screenshots. Look at her. She copying off of what I said. Come on now, somebody. Y'all know that's ungodly. It just ain't right. Hey, Mama Moses, glad to see you. So, number three, if you look at Proverbs 16 and 7, being a peacemaker. When a man's way pleases the Lord. He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Have you ever seen that person and how they say one of those people that People, they did something inside of them just boils when they see them, but they love that person. They can't stop watching them. They can't stop listening to them. They're quoting them. You know, they're, they're really trying to emulate. Stop reading my email. See, I knew somebody out there was doing it. See, I knew it. Somebody had to step up and say, you know what? You use mine. So make sure next time you call my name out for that, right? I see. I knew it. Mm-hmm. So, um... He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. And those people were just constantly talking about him. It's like, well, if you dislike them so much, why are you constantly talking about them? Why are you constantly posting about them, sharing their stuff, going to their events? I just... I just don't understand it, right? You, you've seen that situation, or you yourself may be in that situation, and yeah, it's a few people I really don't care for, but I just can't. It's just something that draws me to them. He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him, and people can't understand, like, why can't I get away from you? What is it? I just... 
I need to get away from you. I, I just like you. I don't like you, but I like you. I don't know. It, it makes people confused, right? So uh, that's what that uh, piece of uh, passage of scripture is telling us, right? Um, and, and when you've lost that ability to emphasize with other people, um, it's like almost now compromise has become a bad word, right? Um, you're weak. You're lesser than, oh, you ain't got no backbone. When people see you trying to compromise and make peace, right? And, and But remember, if you caught my scope last night, I talked about the five types of people that our Heavenly Father chooses. And one of those was the weak, right? So that's one of the things, remember when I say, when people, people say that about you, uh, when people say you weak, be like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I remember, mm-hmm, I remember seeing in the scripture said that's one of the types that God chooses that's what God is looking for the weak the modest right the ones that are willing to compromise and keep the peace but nowadays uh when you see people trying to keep peace people have put such a stigma on that and it's like uh-uh it would have I wouldn't have let them do that if they didn't do it my way we wouldn't have done it at all done it at all again therein lies part of the problem and that's not how any of this works it's just not I don't care what anybody tries to tell me and if somebody tries to tell you be like mm -mm, that's just not right and I'm not going down for that right um and there's such a quality about sticking to your principles have you seen somebody they're just so so convicted they're so stuck in their principles and they're like this is the way of the word this is what it says and I am not Falter, I am not changing from that. This is what we're doing. If you don't like it, there's the door. Let it hit you in one of the spots where the good Lord split you. Y'all heard it before, right? And sometimes that's what you have to tell people. Like, look, I'm not altering. I'm not stepping over into that area of ungodliness. Because why? He watching. He watching. I'm not stepping over into that. There ain't nothing you can do or say to draw me otherwise, right? Sometimes people say they look at the boldness of us standing in our convictions and saying, no, I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep the peace. They look at that as a coldness, right? They say, oh, you just cold. I can't believe mm. Mm -mm. It's even colder to sit there to me and say, uh-uh, it's either my way or no way. But when you're trying to come to a compromise, a nice, even solution just to keep the peace and move on. That's number three, right? Let's look at number four. If we bump down to Proverbs 16 and 8, better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues without justice. What that's saying? You want to be a, a leader who's fair and just. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues with injustice, right? Having goals, working hard towards those goals. But the end, how did I put this? The end always justifying the means is simply not true. If the means in which you've obtained those things were unfair and unjust, is it worth it? He up there watching. I'm, uh, I'm telling y'all, uh, a good leader looks at doing things the right way, the fair and just way. And if we just look across social media at all the unfairness that we see, if we turn on the news, all, all the blatant, you know, um, unfairness, you know, all the injustice, and we're just like, how are people going along with, I just, I just don't understand it. I just really don't. All I do is just pray about it, and I keep on going, right? Because if you sit and become too consumed with it, you'll find yourself spending so much time on that to where you aren't doing what you need to be doing as far as your ministry, as far as your walk, as far as a, um, in, in your purpose, in your calling, whatever that may be. So we have to be careful not to get up in, uh, caught up in all of that, right? Because it's so easy to get sucked in like a vacuum. Welcome to all of those that are coming in. Uh, let's look at number five. A good leader surrounds him or herself with honest, trustworthy counselors and listens to them. Let's look at 16 and 13. You may be saying, what tour where you get that? I got that straight from the word, Proverbs 16 um, and 13. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, 
and they love him who speaks what is right. So you want to make sure you're also around a council of people that have the same godly leadership thought patterns, the same qualities, right? Because if you're running, my daughter, mm, my daughter and I were having this conversation before she left a little bit ago. Um, that saying, and I can't remember who said it. Um, you, you're the product of the people that you spend the most time around, right? And if you catch yourself around a lot of negative people, you, you kind of fall into that trap and you be like, man, when did I get to be such a negative person? When did I get such, to be such a Debbie Downer or a Don Downer about everything? When did I just get to this point where I felt like there was no hope? When did I become so judgmental? And if you closely start to evaluate, and that's the time when you have to, uh, when you go into evaluation mode, you get quiet and you and you just start watching and people say you okay today mm -hmm. I'm doing fine I'm just I'm just watching I'm just observing right and you just really start watching it'll start to stand out but when you're busy what they say uh, uh, um when you're part of the frame until you step out of that picture you can't really see but if you sit and watch and you be like man i re never really re write a negative nancy and people will start when did you get to be so negative karen and then you start to question be like now when did this happen and then you look back and if you just look within your circle of people are the things that you occupy your mind and your time with if you sit i remember at one point I was watching uh, like a lot of the gangster movies and, and all of my actions, the way I would even talk. And I'm like, why am I talking like this? This is not me. And then I had to, I, it really hit me. I'm like, man, all of these movies, all of these shows that I have been watching, this has got to go. Welcome, beloved. Glad to see you. Glad to see you right on time. We're at the halfway point. We are at number five. Talking about a good leader surrounds themselves with honest, trustworthy counselors and listens to them, right? Without counsel, plans fail. But with many advisors, they succeed. And that's if you look at um, Proverbs 15 and 22. Next one, number six. A good leader is a good learner. I hear a lot of people that have said I've come across a lot of people um, I think Marilyn put it up here. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time around. Jim Rohn, right? Jim Rohn. Thank you. Thank you. I knew it. I, mean, I used to hear that all the time. Uh, that was another one of the ones like the MLM and network marketing crews like to use. Um, as part of their pitches, you know, you're who you spend the most time around now. Um, so a good leader, number six, is a good learner. If you look at six, uh, Proverbs 16 and 16, how much better to get wisdom than gold. To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. And if you think about when we went through last night, being chosen, one of the chosen, having those five characteristics out of the scripture that we broke down that God looks for, right? Go back. If you missed it, go back and, and pop in there. It wasn't too long. I believe last night was about 30 minutes or so. But a, a good leader is a good learner, always trying to improve, always growing. You, you come across those people, and I know at some points people will be trying to tell me things. I, I already know that. Or have you ever been explaining something to somebody and before you can I already know i'm fine i don't need it I, I, i'm good i don't need no help right they just, just cut you off and, and in a lot of situations those people will end up coming back and saying now what was you saying about that or they're too prideful to come back to you and you see them in the office or uh over whispering girl how do you do that i don't i thought i knew how to do this but i forgot right so we're always learning we're willing to take in information and say you know what thanks for that learning something every day and i believe it was either yesterday or today i can't remember marilyn had put something in her facebook group right i learned something new every day and how's it go the day you feel you have nothing left to learn is the day that pride and arrogance have taken root i'm gonna run that back the day you sit and say I don't have nothing else to learn 
I don't want to know nothing else. I know everything that I need to know. You have to look. And since they like to put spirit, we like to put spirit in front of everything. You have to say, man, I have been consumed by the spirit of pride and the spirit of arrogance. You need to check yourself because he watching. He, he watch mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Make sure it's one of them nine. One, one of them, where's it at? Right there? Yep, one of them nine. Right? A good learner, a good leader is a good learner. Number seven, we all we almost there, guys. A good leader is humble. Or as I like to hear some of my favorite old Baptist ministers when they preach, humble. A good leader is humble. I love it when they say that, right? And, and, and that's in Proverbs if we look at 16 and 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. That word haughty, that uppity. Mm, you just too good. Mm -hmm. You up there, just, just, just arrogant. Pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Guaranteed every time, right? They say, some say humble, some say humble. Oh, um, I love it when they say that. I really do. Um, you know, if, from, if you look from politicians to celebrities, CEOs, Pastors, a lot of pastors, gospel singers, all types of people, headlines flash across, and you're like, my, 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 you was way up here, and then it was like, boom, pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before the fall, they thought they were invincible. But quickly found out that as our word tells us, no one or nothing is invincible. You're too good for your own self. Amen. Come on now. Come on. You just get up there. You don't want nobody to tell you, you know, don't call me. There was a um, basketball player. What was that last year? I believe I saw that story hosting a basketball camp. And I was so utterly disgusted. When one of the parents came on and her son was at the basketball camp and the kids were instructed, when you see so-and-so, don't try and touch him, don't try and speak to him, don't ask for his autograph. Wait a minute. You had these parents to pay outrageous amounts of money to send their kids to your basketball camp but these kids can't talk to you. They can't touch you. They done better not ask for no autograph. Man, what in the holy hot pepper? I, just, I was truly appalled. Truly appalled. And I'm just calling out the sin. Rarely will you hear me um, highlight the name of, uh, of the person. That, that they don't need any more recognition than they already got. They're a little bit too haughty already. But, and that's how we need to start handling this thing, right? We spend so much time name calling this pastor, this pastor, this pastor, this pastor, this politician, this actor, this, uh-uh. Highlight the sin. Bring that to the four point. Have people to think, man. I never realized that. I never caught that trait. I never caught that character. Then you can start to get a rope and a wrangle on the problem. But the more you highlight a person's name, even though they can be doing the most ungodly things, when people start to research, people that are... Um, don't have the strength or resistance to say, you know what, right, right, the holy, what in the holy hot pepper, that's my new saying this week, y'all, the holy hot pepper, um, uh, <laughs> And, and people go and they get caught up in that. And the next thing you know, they become a follower of that person, a fan. And they're like, oh, I completely forgot I went over here uh, because somebody dished out the tea on such and such person. And you end up one of the, you, know, you just get caught up in it. I'm telling you, you got to watch yourself. Watch yourself, right? So we point out the sin. There was another one. I was living in Florida. I worked over in uh, the West Shore District, kind of nice upscale, a lot of the sports people, um, football players and baseball players would come in there all the time. One in particular would sit at a table. People would come in with their kids. Kids would go over, Mr. So-and-so, kids just so excited. This is one of their favorite baseball players. Come running over. Can I get your autograph? 
Mm-mm. Get away from my table. Seen him several times. Look directly at the parents. Come get your child. I'm not signing autographs. Come on, man. It would have took you just a few seconds. I understand, you know, being in that spotlight, you got a lot of things. But when you take on that charge and calling, come on now. Come on now. You know, God has handed it to you. But you can't take the time. You've gotten so haughty and so high that you can't take a few seconds to just do a little signature on a little napkin or to pat the child on the back or the person just to say, hey, now I know some people take it to the next level, you know, and they start breaking in these people's houses, scaling walls and fighting alligators to get to these celebrities and stuff. But that's a whole nother issue right there. That's a whole nother spirit. So, um... Let's look at number eight real quick. Two more to go. A good leader, he will reap that as an old man needing attention from the youth and will be ignored. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, I, and every time I see him on TV now, I just pray. For, I pray for both of them every time I see him. One is still pretty popular, right, fighting alligators. Who was it um, that climbed over the fence <laughs> trying to get to um, – which actress was that? It was one of the actresses. But they actually had like a moat with alligators in it around their property. And the person, when they scaled the fence, seriously, y'all, y'all can Google it. Um, when they scaled the fence, the, per the fan, the, the uh, deranged fan, didn't realize that it was alligators in that moat. So they was fighting alligators to get up out of there. Uh, they wasn't expecting that one. So um, <laughs> number eight, a good leader is sensible and kind. Proverbs 16, if we bump down to 22 and 23, understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it. But the correction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. Sensible in kind. Uh, another version breaks it down. Good sense is a fountain of life to him who has it. But the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise makes his speech judicious and adds persuasiveness to his lips. Breaking that down simply, you can catch more flies with honey. More flies with honey. Have you ever went into... You're trying to have a conversation. You're trying to convince somebody. But you have that person that feels like the yelling and screaming and taking over the conversation and the bullying and the bulldozing of other people is going to get them what they want, right? No, 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 no. You can catch more flies with honey. I even tried it one time. Put some honey out there and something and watch how many flies come attracted to that thing, right? Put some vinegar out there and ain't none of them coming to it. So when you try and do things with vinegar as opposed to honey, it's taking the long route and that's not how any of this works, right? So a good leader, sensible and kind. Remember that. And the last one, number nine, a good leader is slow to anger. If we drop down to 27, Proverbs 16, 27, an ungodly man digs up evil and it is on his lips like a burning fire. You ever see them people? They get so mad, it look like they just gonna explode and they start shaking and yelling and screaming. That's uh, my in-laws bulldoze their way. See, that is not the way. You can look at them next time and be like, mm-mm, this is not. Go over with Proverbs 16 uh, with your Bible and be like, mm-mm, this is not one of the essential qualities to get up in there. He watching. He watching. Mm-hmm. A good leader is slow to anger. Those people that bark orders as opposed to, say, um, you know, asking the secretary or, um, their associate, I know they have a different name for it now. Um, uh, Miss Waters, would you mind bringing me a cup of coffee? Could you please? You know, I'll get it myself, but I got to get on this call. But you got that person. Get me some water. Can you bring? Where's my coffee? I should have had my coffee 15 minutes ago. Well, if you wanted 15 minutes ago, you got God gave you two feet. Last time I checked, yep, they still connected. They still seem mobile. Ain't no problems with them. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If you wanted it that bad, you would already went and got it instead of barking orders at me, right? Or that person that has to berate everybody, belittle people, right? And, and, and instead of saying, you know what? You did a great job today. 
They have to throw that side jab in. Yeah, good work today, but you know you could have got um, you could have got a little bit more done um, if you'd have been on time and if you'd have, uh, wouldn't have taken such a longer lunch. And also, I noticed that um, when I walked by your desk, you know, you just seemed like you was kind of day. So um, you could do a little bit more than you was doing. Always a way to belittle people instead of just saying just rude. I can't deal with the rudeness. I just right. Sometimes some situations just keep you in constant prayer, man. We have some strong neck muscles, you know. Uh, either you like this, or you like. Mm. Oh, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus, I need you to be a fence. I need you to be a wall right now. Jesus, I just need you to be a cloak of calmness over me. Sometimes we have to do, I'm almost to my husband, <laughs> right? And, and then be just barking orders, demoralizing people, making people feel less than. I had a um, close friend of mine, went to an office, um, works in D.C., and, um, her co-worker thought it appropriate to let her know, well, you dress okay, but we think you could dress a little bit better. Huh? What the holy hot pepper? Dress a little bit better. I got on nice, you know. The pants came off the clearance from Neiman Marcus. You know, I got on a nice blouse here. So you think I could dress a little bit better? Demoralizing people. Oh, I notice you still driving that old raggedy car, girl. What you doing with all your money every time we get paid? You know, just demoralize, just saying stuff that just leaves you like, what in the holy hot pepper are you talking about? You know, y'all use that on them and tell me how it works out. When they say, they like, what the holy hot pepper are you talking about? Come on now, somebody. Hashtag that, holy hot pepper. Because <laughs> you know, when we start going through that, uh, uh, my sister Mel and I call it cussing rehab, right? Um, you have some people that still say uh, that they cussing Christians. That's not how any of this works. So you have to alter things. You know, I catch myself saying, what in the sand ballot? Because y'all know it's a bunch of foolishness in sand ballot, right? So as opposed to saying what I would say back then, uh, I say, what in the sand ballot are you talking about? What? What? You, so you have to improvise with that thing. You can set people straight with the word all kinds of ways, right? And if it convictualize them. That's their problem. You know, I ain't trying to convict you late. Yeah, that's that word I like to make up. Uh, nobody uh, uh, convictualize, uh, you know, make anybody feel convictualated. But if it's touching you some sort of way, again, um, as, um, as I said, a message is for the messenger first. And MJ's popular song, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Look in the mirror because we can point out, I could list out a whole bunch of people um, that I think this applies to, right? Um, but it's much harder to look at ourselves and say, man, am I slow to anger? Am I sensible and kind? Do I seek God's direction in my leadership? Man, am I modest or do I have, you know, some arrogant moments that I still need to work on? Do I try and keep the peace and make peace? in all situations, you know, try it, get in front of the mirror, try this thing, and, and, and it may seem like an easy nine list, this ain't no easy list, or as my grandma would say, you know, y'all knew I grew, um, grew up in Mississippi, right, and when the workers would be out there chopping cotton, you know, they'd be like, this ain't no easy road to hoe, and I did try and chop cotton one time, and that just didn't work, it, uh, didn't work, mm -mm, that wasn't for me. But you know what, people that like to undermine people will definitely have to. I'm about to scroll that back. Uh, where is it here? I wanted to catch that comment. All right. But you know what, people that like to undermine people will most definitely have to answer to that, right? Everything is there. Everything is accounted for. Stuff that I've forgotten, and I still try and think, Lord, is there anything that I've done that I've forgotten that I have not repented for? Because, you know, sometimes when you're in, uh, you know, that, that life, you, you, you forget. So I just said, Lord, anything that I've forgotten, you know, I repent for. Please forgive me of that. You know, and some of the stuff, you know, people think, oh, I'm getting away with it. I'm going to be just fine because, you know, in this day and age where we're pacifying people, um, feeding them applesauce and telling them it, it don't matter what you do, everything is okay. We went so far as, you know, you got bishops telling people, 
Ain't no such thing as hell. Live whatever kind of life that you want to live. I've had a vision and, and, and everything that I've taught since I was 13 does not apply anymore. Just live how you want to live. That's not how any of this works. I'm sorry. It just is not, Bishop. And I'll be glad when you come on back home. Come on back home, Bishop. You, you, you still a good man. Miss you, Bishop. Come on back. Somebody out there know what I'm talking about, right? And asking yourself, are you a good learner? Are you a humble leader? Making sure you're checking off all of those qualities. And ain't no shame in the game. If it's something that you need to work on, I come on here and tell all my business all the time. Yep, I still need to work on that. Anger when I got that now, I don't let that stuff bother me now. I'm like, mm-mm, whatever. <laughs> Uh huh. Mm hmm. That, that's that's your problem. You the one got the problem with it. I'm just telling you what it says here, and I'm just living uh, how I'm called to live. You need to figure out what you want to do. That's the way I deal with that one with people. You know, but uh, all the time making sure instead of when I get these brilliant ideas in my head, making sure I say, "Oh, wait a minute," instead of just running, slowing down, erp, hitting the brakes, and saying, "Wait a minute." Let me make sure. Let me go to the word. Let me make sure this is God, what God wants me to do. But what they don't understand, the ones that you undermine, it makes them stand out even more. Come on now. Come on now. So, just making sure. And don't be ashamed of it. It may be somebody else out there. That may be your calling to start the group on it. Um, like, like, what's the one? The um, gospel singer that's got the uh, alcohol addiction. What does she do? She went and found the other women that have the alcohol addiction. And they started a group. Didn't try and hide it. Put it on Instagram. They started a group. Anybody out there that's got an alcohol? Yes, I'm singing the gospel. I'm evangelizing the gospel vocally. But I have an alcohol problem. We try and hide these things. And that causes us uh, to fall off. Because like I said, you can only um, put so much... Uh, white paint down the side of a horse eventually it's gonna rain and you're gonna look be like now you don't trick me like that was a zebra all this time and that's been a horse mm -mm. it just don't work that way and, and it causes a lot of confusion i don't know if you ever ridden anybody ever ridden a horse and now a lot of now if you just look at it from the perspective of watching tv it looks like you kick it and you're pulling the reins you're kicking and you're pulling the reins no that ain't doing nothing but confusing the horse. That's not how any of that works. That ain't doing nothing when we're kicking and pulling the reins at the same time. When God's saying, just let it go. Please let it go. But we're steady kicking and trying to pull on the reins and hollering, yeah, giddy up at the same time. God is like, no, just let it go. Loosen the reins. I got this. Let me drive this. But we too busy trying to do it ourselves. And a lot of the times, steering ourselves right out of the leadership qualities. Come on now, somebody. Somebody know what I'm talking about. All right. Now, that's my lesson for tonight. That's the nine qualities we went through. Seeking God's direction. Being modest and not arrogant. Sensible and kind. Slow to anger a peacemaker, fair and just, surrounding yourself with honest, trustworthy people, never forgetting that you're never too old to learn something new and keep learning, and, and you're never at that point where you have more degrees than a thermometer, where there's not something else that you can't learn from somebody else. And as my old Baptist ministers like to say, a good leader is humble. Being humble. What well, Kendra Lamar says, sit down. Stay humble. All right? That's my message for y'all tonight. I love y'all. I really, really do. And as I say, hey, when, when it sounds, I want all of us to be heading up there towards that upper room. Somebody, yep, right on up there. Uh, what it said, many mansions are waiting for us up there. Up there tidying and cleaning. And what was a Mary and Martha, right? So I know she up there, uh, who was it sitting at the feet was a Mary. So I know Martha up there getting everything ready. She getting Karen's um, vegan items ready. She get making sure Sandra going to have her vegetarian items when she get up there uh, for the ones that like the ham hocks and the collard greens and all that, the cornbread. Everybody, they getting it all ready for you. Gabriel up there, he's shining it. He getting everything all ready. Making sure the streets all sweeped off, everything look all nice. I want to go see. I'm nosy. I am. I really want to go see. Because they say, you know, um, what's that saying? Uh, 
Ain't no way to go but up. You got that right. I want to go up, up and down. Mm-hmm. Up and there. Uh-huh. That's where I want to go. And I want y'all to go, too, because I want to come over and see what you got in your house, Mary, and be like, girl, what did God put up in your kingdom? Let me see what you got. Mm-hmm. You got any of that palm wine and that fresh skin? Girl, give me some of that. Y'all, we're going to sit around and have a good old time, right? I'm going to pop up out of here until tomorrow night. Oh, I got something special for y'all tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make sure y'all here tomorrow night. Y'all might want to text two, three, four, five, six, seven people and be like, Taurus says she got something for us tomorrow night mm-hmm. we might have what we can uh call little church tomorrow all right i love y'all i really really do let's work on those qualities so we can get in that upper room all right walk good do good be good tornado i'm out of here i'm going to keep working on my qualities because um i'm trying to get up there i don't know about y'all all right not the ham hock and the black eyed pea hey somebody likes you know some people still like to indulge in that pork they going through that thing that peter was in and was like give me some pork so you know hey if that's your thing you going on but just make sure you have me some lentils or something on the stove when I come over to see what you got in your mansion up there in the kingdom. Amen. All right, I'm out. You all know the Torah. 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 Torah.